I mean, I hate doing that because if it's far. Yeah, I mean, I would never want to do that. <laughs> See, I'm not one of those people that would just have you run all the way for a nice coffee. In fairness, you didn't know it was far. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't either. I, 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 I did feel like I was starting to be the starting to be kind of a dick though, but it was like, oh. like, oh, it's kind of far. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> this video for PokerNews.com, we have a retro poker hand from High Stakes Feud featuring two YouTube legends, Dale Negreanu and Doug Polk. They are playing $61,000 deep at 200, 400. Dale Negreanu bumps it up with the queen six of hearts and Doug Polk makes the easy call. Let's go to the flop. Uh, I know bad. what I want. Well, I know what you generally don't want, and that's to be dominated heading into a flop, as Daniel is, with queen six against queen ten. Both players with gut shot straight draws. Really interesting flop here, Lee. Daniel Negreanu with the straight draw and the backdoor flush draw. The flop is a doozy that gives both players nothing but everything. It is nine, eight, five with a heart. Doug Polk checks. Negreanu with his gut shot and overcard and backdoor flush draw goes for a nice 1,500 bet over to Doug Polk. I think calling is the play that makes the most sense in this situation. When you have the top end of the gut shot, you really don't want to raise and then get re-raised. So very often the right play is to just call. I think Polk would prefer to raise weaker draws like queen six, for example. But with queen 10, I think this is a nice spot to call and then proceed to the turn, which is exactly what he does. Doug Polk with the gut shot to the nuts. Oh, and in comes the seven of hearts, the best card in the deck for Daniel, who has a redraw to a queen high flush, and it gives Polk a two-way straight draw now. The turn is a seven of hearts, giving Dale Negreanu a straight plus a flush draw. Doug Polk checks. And then, much to my surprise, Negreanu checks it back. I don't know why he would check it back here. The only reason that I think makes sense is that he must think that Doug Polk is going to drastically overbluff the river. We have to realize when Doug Polk check calls the flop, he's going to have a lot of hands with a nine or an eight. And those hands are not going to need to bluff the river. So I think this is a spot where you can just easily bet with an okay range of straights, maybe some sets can value bet, plus a lot of bluffs. And at this point, Negreanu will have some straights and a whole lot of bluffs. So I think this is a spot where he definitely wants to keep betting. But he does not. Let's see if Polk gets bailed out on the river. Whoa. We see Daniel continue oh. to check back. And disaster on this occasion as the jack slides in on the river, giving Polk the pure nuts. And of course, Negreanu is going to bet into this 5 Oh, my goodness, Ali. The river is the jack of spades, giving Doug Polk the nuts. With the nuts out of position, all options are available. When the turn goes check, check, I think you can somewhat presume that Negreanu does not have very many sixes which means he's probably gonna have a lot of marginal hands or a 10. The problem is though that Doug Polk blocks the 10. So I think a pretty nice play in this situation is to make a small value bet on the river. Pot's 5,000, maybe Polk could go 1,000 or 2,000, which will also induce Negreanu to raise with his straights like a six or a 10, which Polk can then re-raise. You're gonna find that in spots like this, betting tiny out from out of position will get called by stuff like an eight or a seven, which is not gonna bet if you check while also allowing Negreanu to raise with stuff like, well, this queen six, that then you can then blast. But whatever, Polk checks. Let's see what Negreanu does. He can't possibly check back this, can he? No, there's no way. Daniel Negreanu is just thinking, what amount am I gonna bet here? It's a 5K pot, I checked back the turn. 1,000. Negreanu gets quite fancy in this scenario, and he goes for a 1,000 bet into a 5,000 pot. Now look, I'm certainly not a heads-up expert. These players have both studied far more than I have at heads-up. But in general, from in position, if you are going to bet, and you're trying to play close to GTO, the smallest bet size you should use in most scenarios is 50% pot or so. Because whenever you bet, you open the door for yourself to get raised. And that forces you to not value bet super duper thinly against players who play well, who will check raise both with value hands and bluffs. Now, if you know your opponent's gonna call a tiny bet with all sorts of trash and they're never gonna bluff raise you, then sure, betting small becomes fine. But he has playing against loose, aggressive, badly dug Polk. So I think in this spot, Negreanu should bet, 
either half pot or full pot, because I think his hand is definitely good enough for that. But he goes for the thousand. Let's see how much Polk tries to charge him. Obviously, he knows any 10 has him beat, let alone queen 10. Going with 20% pot. But when we kind of fling that one yellow chip out there, do we not get concerned that the opposition might be tempted to represent and check raise us off of our holding? In general, that wouldn't be something that I'm too concerned about. I do think that Negranio could have sized up a little bit more here, especially because he's so under-repped having checked back the turn. Sure. 8,500. And the check raise is a big one. Yeah, it's a little bit more than pot. So I bet that, figuring you're going to do that, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Block that. Oh boy, Doug's just praying. Daniel's got a 10 here. Oh, wait a minute. As Doug Polk was thinking, I was trying to consider how big I would go over this 1,000 bet. And Polk goes to about 8,500, which is a touch more than pot. I think I probably would have gone even bigger in this scenario, like 15,000 or 18,000. Notice that is not all of Negranu's stack because he has 64,000 total, so he may be kind of inclined to hero call, perhaps lighter than if it was for all of his money. And if Negranu has a 10 or a 6, he's going to call literally any amount, right? So the question becomes, at what point would he ever fold a 6? And uh, I just don't think most people are folding a 6 in this spot. It's a very odd scenario because I have to presume Polk thinks that Negranu does not have very many straights because he would bet a lot of sixes on the turn as well as tens. So perhaps Polk is just trying to get called by two pair or a set, which I do think will be most of Negranu's range at this point to bet and then call. So perhaps going humongous is not ideal, but look, Doug Polk can get away with running big bluffs because people know he likes to get after it. If you have a loose, aggressive, battly image, if you make YouTube videos about it and people know it, that's a really good reason to also go very big with your absolute nut hands. But he goes 8,500. Let's see if Negranu can make the biggest fold I've ever seen anyone make. Well, maybe you have the same hand. No, you would never raise with that. Never mind. So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 7,500 more. Seems like a spawn idea. Daniel needs to be right here about 35% of the time to make it a profitable call. Matches for roles, for pride, for ego seem to be becoming more and more popular. What I want to know is who are two poker players, alive or dead, who you would like to see battle it out on the felt for all the marbles? Take a second, think about it, and let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, click the like and subscribe button. Polk, stony face, trying not to give anything away. Doesn't seem like Daniel's paying too much attention to his body language. Okay. How much is that? 70? 85. 85. Mm -hmm. Is there, though, a chance? Oh, he oh, does that's... make the call, Ali. Oh, the queen, too. That was hard to have. Wow. I could have lost a lot more money on this hand. <laughs> There's six? I had better than the six. You had ten? I had... Well, not exactly, but I had well, better. What than, do you have? I had better than a six. I had better, better than a six and a ten. You, well, you'll figure it out. Okay. Better than a six. Sixes. Better than that. What would be better than that on the turn that isn't that's jack high straight? You'll figure it out. Figure it out. You'll see. All you'll right. Figure it out. I'll see. After much deliberation, down on the ground, who does decide to make what I think is a very easy call, he loses. Polk wins the pot. They move on to the next hand. 